blood of animals sacrificed, slaughtered for, for their sins. And, and he is telling them that you are fattening yourself just like they fattened themselves. He is telling you are so <laughs> just the steers. The steers, when they go next to them, on neither side, they simply are worried about themselves being filled and getting fat. And he's when you come to the feed bunk, when you come to where you are being fed, all you worry about is yourself. It, you don't worry about your neighbors. You don't worry about your friends. You don't worry about anybody but yourself. Because that is evidence against you on the day of slaughter. You have killed innocent people. Do not resist you. Innocent people would be... Um, um, the people that had worked, but the, the, when you had debt, you had no choice but to pay it. So if you could not pay your debt because you were not paid, you sometimes sold a child. You sometimes, um, you couldn't, some into, you could not pay. So therefore you died of starvation is what happened. So what, is you are guilty of that murder. It's because you did not, they died, and that is on your hands. That is murder. Smarten up, people. Verse 7. Dear brothers and sisters, be wait for the Lord's return. Consider the farmers who patiently wait for the rains in the fall and in the spring. They eagerly look for the valuable harvest to ripen. You too must be patient. Take courage. For the coming of the Lord is near. Then he, then he gives another warning. Don't grumble about each other, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. For look, the judge is standing at the door. Do not complain about each other. Do not grumble about each other. He's talking now, he says brothers and sisters. So now again, he's talking to the church people specifically. Do not complain about your brothers or sisters. Because the, the judge is standing at the door. If you are complaining and grumbling about somebody around you, you yourself do not accept what Christ did on the cross. You are judging them. We are to not complain. We are not to grumble. If, if, if a sin that is happening, we are called to help them, but we are not to judge them. We're not to condemn them. We're there to help them, right? Because the judge is standing at the door. The one who judges all is watching your every move, is what James means. I, he sees everything. You can't get away from it. For examples of brothers and sisters, look at the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. We give great honor to those who endured under suffering. For instance, you know about Job, a man of great endurance. You can see how the Lord was kind to him at the end, for the Lord is full of tenderness and mercy. Some of the prophets that endured suffering would have, you could say Moses, Elijah, Jeremiah. These were prophets that spoke the, the very words of the Lord. They suffered dearly for it. Um, they, they suffered because they and they knew who their God was. And he says, look at them for, for examples of, of patience in suffering. They were very patient. Yes, God, we will talk about we are willing to take the suffering in which you call us to. Verse 12. But most of all, my brothers and sisters, never take an oath by heaven or earth or anything else. Just say a simple yes or no so that you will not sin and be condemned. Take a simple oath. There's so many things I see in this verse. So many ways to read it. Why would you have to swear by God I'm telling the truth? That would really question your past. If you have to swear by it, maybe we should change the way we live. He's saying maybe you should change the way you talk normally so that it's just a simple, yes, yes, I will do that. No, I won't. And be a person of your word. If you say yes, do it. Simple yes, okay, I'll do it. I should not have to question you if you say yes. If you say no, let it be a no. No, I'm not going to do it, and that's it. Let our yes be yes, and our no's be no. Just say, it says, say, just say a simple yes or no. 
so that you will not sin and be condemned. Now we get into the Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. If you have committed any sins, you will. When Jesus prayed over people, many times he says, go and sin no more. He brought up, go and sin no more. Your faith now go and sin no more. Same thing that James is saying. Such a prayer offered in faith, so you have the person praying has faith, will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. I just want to look for a second. Are any of you happy? Right? Let's praise the Lord for our, our happiness. We really what's happening, but this is um love doing our 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 fellowship prayer and fellowship, which is coming at the end today. But um, where we ask what God is doing in your life, because there's so much good, please don't want to share it, right? But this is important. if you are happy, sing praises, bring it up. Let what God is doing in your life. Let God is changing you. God's name about the change that's happening in your life. We don't just ask for the prayer, but bring the, uh, the answers to prayer so we can share in celebrating who God is in your life. Verse 16, confess your sins to each other and so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great wonderful results. Confess your sins to each other. This is a tough one. It's hard to confess our sins to each other. If you sin against a person, just confess it to them. Hey, I really, um, I was jealous of you. Or maybe I was really lucky. 